Hello everybody, so today we are going to look at stoichiometry um, we're going to do a couple of questions and how I'm going to do it is I'm going to divide them up into different um, videos so for instance this would be stoichiometry um, example A and my next video will be B and C and so forth um, just to keep the videos a little bit shorter than the, um, than the 15 minutes or so it takes to, to do one of these questions so look, the example we can see here is 2018, question 10C. Um, I actually like stoichiometry. I think when it comes up, they can be very manageable. Uh, it usually comes up as a question 10, so a lot of students tend to skip it. But as we know, question 10 could feature a really, really nice question A, or section A of it, or even a section B. And if you could do the stoichiometry of it, well, then you could be getting close to full marks for this section. So the first question reads there is, how many moles of iron were removed from the object in the rust treatment rust treatment process. So this is actually kind of confusing in terms of what is being asked here. So let's go back to the, um, the text up here. It says when a rusty object was coated with phosphoric acid. Okay, so this spanner here was coated with some phosphoric acid. The rust, Fe2O3, on its surface, so that's it, this is here, was converted to iron phosphate. So iron phosphate being here. Okay, uh, and you're told how many grams of iron phosphate were produced. So when they put the phosphoric acid onto this, okay, they produced 4.53 grams of this iron phosphate that came off it. And you're asked to find out how many moles of iron were removed from the object in the rust treatment process. Okay, well this is obviously the moles of iron um, being removed. So let's start off so for part I. Always, always, always start off for any of these. Just write out the equation that you need. Okay, we're looking for the number of moles. So write out number of moles formula. So number of moles equals mass over MR. Okay, that's for solids really. Okay, um, and you can see any of these, um, any of these equations, all of these equations, I should say, are on the conical flask there. If you go into revision aid under chemistry, the tab chemistry there, you'll see all of these come up. I actually think they're handy to have and printed out and near you when you're doing one of these questions because you'll almost definitely be using two or three of them. Promise. Okay, so this is our formula here. Number of moles, mass over MR. Okay, well, straight off we can see we have the mass. So the mass isn't going to be a problem there. The mass is equal to 4.53 grams. Grand. Okay, now we just need to figure out the number of moles for us. Okay, so number of moles here. Um, and in order for us to do that, we need to find out the MR. Well, the MR is just some left of masses. Okay, so we're dealing with FEPO4. That means there is one iron. So the mass of iron is 56 times 1. There's one iron. There's one phosphorus. And the mass of phosphorus, the atomic mass of that is 31. And there is oxygen then and there's four of those and oxygen has an atomic mass of 16 and there's four of those and look if you just add those all up together okay you'll get um 151 151 there okay so pop it over here the mr being 151 therefore final answer for this one would be 0 0.03 moles I might just online that there in a small bit. Okay, so that's how much moles of um of iron is being um is being removed. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one for part two there. Okay, part two. What mass of rust was adhering to the object before the treatment? So they want to know how much of the rust was stuck onto the metal before the treatment. Okay. Uh, it's a funny way of wording the question, really, um, but that's just that's what you're asking. Okay, so in this case here, we're told that the rust is this over here, Fe2O3. Now, this is where we bring up our mass formula there. Okay, so mass is we're just going to use we're just going to manipulate this formula up here, guys. Okay, so mass equals number of moles times the MR. Okay. Well, the MR is handy enough because we know the MR is going to be 
FE203, I think it was Rust or somewhere, like that, somewhere on those lines. Yeah, so FE203. Now, I'm just going to cheat here a small bit, guys, and write out the answer for the MR being um, 160. Okay, just to speed things, up, um, speed things up a bit. So, we have the 160 here. Now, how do we figure out the number of moles? Well, we don't know the mass. And we ha while we know the MR, we don't know the no number of moles. So therefore, we can't actually um, use this formula here okay, to figure out what number of moles is. Now, what we can do is go back up to here. Okay, It's not hard at all. Go back to your equation here. See these big numbers in front? The 2, the 3, the 2. There's a 1 here. There's no um, number in front, but we assume it's a 1. It's like x in maths. We don't put 1x down. We just leave it as x. Same principle here. Now, we know that we have 0 0.03 moles of this guy over here. Well, the 2s and the 1s, they're just a ratio of the number of moles. That's all it is. Okay. So if we have 0 0.03 moles of um, FEPO4 and we have this 2 is to 1, that must mean we must have 0 0.015 moles of iron, FE2O3. And likewise, we must have 0 0.03 moles of our phosphoric acid. Okay, so all we're doing there is getting the ratio between these. Okay, and the ratios for the number of moles. That's the only time that you want to use these big numbers in your equations. Okay, so we put down 0 0.015 there because the ratio there was 2 is to 1. And if we get the mass, then the mass should equal to be um, 2.4 grams. Okay, we'll highlight that there as well. Okay, so we have that part now done. Okay, we're on to the next part here. So that's part three. Okay, so that is, let's just write it down here. And let's see what's been asked. Okay, part three, everybody's asking, what is the minimum volume in centimeters cubed of six molar solution needed to remove all of the rust? Okay. So six more solution of phosphoric acid was at the minimum volume there. Okay, so we're coming across another formula here, okay? There isn't that many formulas for volume for liquids, okay? We're not given the density of this, but we are given the molarity. And as soon as I hear a volume and molarity in the same question, I bring up this formula here and I'll show you now. Okay, it is number of moles equals molarity. Times um, the volume over a thousand. Okay, and I asked myself now, do I have all the information here? We're looking for the volume. Okay, so we'll have to manipulate this. A thousand is the standard. Do we know the molarity? Well, we do because we were told up here it was six molar. Okay, and the number of moles. Do we know the number of moles of phosphoric acid? Well, we we don't, but we do know that it's uh, the number of moles of FePO four which was 0 0.03. And we can see here it's 2 is to 2. So that means if we have 0 0.03 moles of FEPO4, we will also have 0 0.03 moles of our phosphoric acid, H <coughs> H3PO4. So we actually have all the information here, guys, to, to, um, to solve this, okay? So let's have a go at it. We know the number of moles is 0 0.03, okay? Equals our molarity is 6 times our volume which we don't know so we'll leave that as a question mark over a thousand okay manipulate it okay so it becomes 0 0.03 times a thousand divided by six okay equals our volume and if we do all of that out okay we will get five centimeters cubed equals the volume okay just plug it into your calculator and that's what we get okay so we're using a different formula this time and um, this formula here is for a number of moles it's often used when we have um, just the molarity so we're not given the mass so we kind of use this formula here a lot when we were dealing with liquids uh, which we were because it was um, an acid phosphoric acid we were using so look, we have um, that part there done now. So that's part three. And we're on to our final part now for IV there. So we're asked for the volume again, actually. So what volume of liquid water? Now, this time we're giving a density. 
Okay, because so we're not given the molarity for this, so we are given a density which produced in the reaction. So we go back to our formula there for um for density, and this is something you should know from um from your studies from junior cycle, okay, uh, and it does come up in chemistry quite often too. Okay, so let's just fill in the information here first. IV here. Okay, so we're told that we're we're given a density, so density equals mass over volume, okay. And we're told the density there is one grams. You can see it here. And we're asked for the volume. Okay, so our density is one equals we don't know what the mass is yet. Okay, we'll fill that in. Mass over our volume. Okay, so how can we figure out what's the story with this? We'll figure out the mass before we go on before we go anywhere. Okay. So we fill in our formula there. Um number of moles equals mass over MR. So therefore we can manipulate that to be number of moles times the MR equals the mass. Oh, we're looking for the mass of water. Okay, so that means the MR of water is H2O, so that's one oxygen and two hydrogen, so that's gonna be 18. And now we'll figure out the number of moles is. Well, it's the same thing again. Let's go back up here. We know from um, before that for Fe2O3, if we did that out, we got 0 0.015 moles. Okay, so 0 0.015 moles. Okay, and that's 1 is to 3. So I have 3, three, more, um, three times the amount of number of moles than I do Fe2O3. So I just multiply that by 3. Okay, and when we do that, we'll get our, scroll down, we get our 0 0.045, okay, and if I multiply that by the 18, then you'll get the, um, the mass to be 0 0.81 grams. So 1 equals 0 0.81 over the volume. Now, we're looking for the volume here. Okay, so we need to manipulate that. So it actually changes to volume equals the mass over the density. Okay, so volume equals the mass is one divided by um, 0 0.81. Okay, we just divide that by, oh, sorry, I made a mistake there, didn't I? Um, it's actually the way around. So it should be 0 0.81 grams over 1. Okay. And that's 1 centimeter cubed. Okay. Well, anything divided by 1, okay, is going to be um, the same as what it was. So in this case here, the volume equals 0 0.81 centimeters cubed. This is grams per centimeters cubed, and it'll cancel out. I'll just double check everything. Um, as soon as you have, like, once you have the formulas right, to be honest, most of the rest of us is fairly straightforward um, in figuring out. And the key to this, like, really, you're just using the number of moles to formulas over and over again um, for I to IV. Okay, um, but the key was to figure out the ratios between these. Okay, and you're going to be doing that so often, uh, but that's all it is. Those big numbers there are just the ratios for the number of moles. Okay, and once you can do those, you'll actually you'd be fine. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else really to say about this one here, so I'm going to leave it off as that. So stay tuned for the next um video on stoichiometry, um coming soon. Okay.